Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling in Zimbabwe. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're taking a look at an exciting new feature uh, in Zim016 called shaders. So right here, shaders allow you to make really cool effects and art. In this video, I'm going to introduce shaders to you and shaders in Zim. We will do a more in-depth uh, video called an explore where we go in and take a look at the code in more detail. And I'm addressing two potential audiences right now. One, ones that are coming in to take a look at shaders in Zim because they already work with shaders. And two, the people that have never really worked with shaders before and want to see what it's about. Uh, it is, we're in Zim version 016. That means we've done a lot of stuff in Zim, and yet finally we're introducing shaders. That's because shaders are a little bit tricky. They're kind of the, the height of um, generative art kind of things. Uh, yeah, and it's a bit low level, so low level means it's a touch harder to code. And it needs to be very efficient so they they don't do things the same way we usually do things in Zim. It has its own language called GLSL. But what we've done in Zim is made it so that we can bring in shaders, say from Shader Toy. This is a more of a visual way of seeing a whole bunch of examples of shaders. And it's not visually making shaders, but uh, at least there's a whole bunch of examples of stuff with a lot of help, a beautiful community with people sort of saying why the shaders are, how they are, etc. So that will help you through the language. You can basically bring in that shader code, paste it into Zim code, and have it work for the most part. So that's where we're at. Um, let me just introduce what we've been doing for art. If we come on down, Zim is a general canvas framework. It's good for making art and games and anything like that. And here are 10 banners of what we generally use the canvas for and specifically Zim for. One of those is generative art. And if we press in there, if you haven't seen what Zim can do, uh, Zim's got generator, which works a lot like P5.js or processing, where it will uh, do relative positioning of, of images, and that avoids sines and cosines a lot. So you get your um, uh, standard processing type structures, and you can press there to go visit it. But we also have a lot of components that we can embed right in our art, or indeed, instead of using dat GUI, this is uh, similar to that GUI, which would be these little uh, GUI, a graphical user interface, up in the top with sliders and dials and checkboxes and stuff. We can do almost that exactly if we want, but we tend to make tools to help people make art. So there's interactive NFTs. And if you want to find out more about it, then uh, please come and, and visit this link right here. Invite in, invite for generative art makers and interactive artists. We tend to make tools so that people can use these components that we've got in Zim to make their own uh, tools and stuff. And those components are embedded in their art. All right, uh, well, that aside, let's uh, go back. And by the way, this section for artists, since shaders, people who use shaders probably uh, consider themselves to some degree artists, I would imagine, if not fully artists. But there's also a more section here. So if you press open more, we deal with how Zim has loops and we have a nice easy uh, loop, it's called. So that's a Zim loop right there. Time, we can work with times. We've got a ticker that is called and that will run in time. We can do anything in graphics. Um, we have the generator as mentioned. Here's the new information on shaders. And then we can make interactive NFTs. We've got Zim Pen, which can let you draw art with uh, animated pens and, and stuff. We've got these shapes, such as blobs and squiggles, that we can let the user change the shapes of them in here. We could use these to mask the shaders. So because the shaders are coming into the 2D canvas, we can work with them directly. It's not just an overlay. Um, so that's exciting um, to do things like masking, we'll get tile. 
We have emitters, so we could emit the shaders potentially. I don't know if we want to do that. Emitters, there's a thousand a second. They're all shaders. Um, we, we tend to work with noise, so we're already working with noise. You can also work with noise in, in your shader. So if you've worked in shaders before, you know noise. Well, we don't need to use shaders for that. We've, we've got that here as well. We can animate to sound. Uh, here's it being used in industry. Okay, so you get it. A lot of stuff to do with art. And now we finally introduce shaders. Speaking of shaders, let's go take a look at them, shall we? Yay! So I'm pressing this, and that takes us into the general features of 016. Not all of this stuff is shaders, just this top left corner. But we didn't want back on the home page, we didn't want people to miss the updates. That's normally our updates right there, but that's a little bit up in the corner. So our feature banner back here also links through to the same place, and then you find shaders. We are doing bubbling videos on each of these, and we did we just did a general bubbling video about all of them. So if, if you haven't seen the general bubbling video, you might want to check that out. Okay, so here we go into shaders. This has a Zim list that's put uh, diagonally across there that gives us the various examples this one's interactive. Let's check it out. Ooh, so this shader came from Shader Toy, as most of them did, and it's by Zerk. <clears throat> so we've credited uh, who made the shader, and I would suggest you do that too. If you use a shader that already you know somebody else made in your application, then you should um, give them the credit there. And in some cases, I don't know, on on the Shader Toy, it might say, please don't use this unless you whatever. Uh, but most of them seem to be uh relatively open source like that and the whole shader community tries to help each other these kinds of patterns have been made before so th we're all building upon uh code that's that's been around for a while as a matter of fact i wouldn't be surprised if this were 10 years old code in the first place but still um we uh, would want to credit them on the zim logo right there is a shader do you see that isn't that neat so that's a little shader right in there, helping uh, accentuate the Zim logo for Zim016. Very nice. Uh, drop this down um, and come back to, to try out some other ones. We started our learning with this example right here. That's a shader that is changing colors, and we can even show you into the code of that. And then we've made it so that we can control the shader from the outside using a Zim stepper here. Uh, in, in controlling the shader, we use these things called uniforms. You can think of uniforms almost as parameters that were passed. Well, maybe not. More like properties that we're adjusting afterwards. So the shader, is, the code is over here and it gets built. And if you want to control the things in there dynamically afterwards, you use uniforms. So we've also created a, a uniform object or a uniform class in Zim that helps handle that which would allow us to animate the uniforms with wiggle and animate, which is pretty exciting as well. So certain uniforms will get passed in automatically, such as a time gets passed in, and most of those come from Shader Toy. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Uh, this is by David Banks, and it was from a blog post on how to do that. So we've incorporated some of his work in a general boilerplate template into the Zim shader, along with uh, things that are coming from Mozilla and so forth uh, as a template. And that's what helped us make Zim Shader in behind so that we can simplify all of that for you by just saying new shader. <laughs> that's yay. So you don't need to worry about the hundred of lines that, you know, complicated lines that put this shader code into place. Uh, we've abstracted that for you and I am Dr. Abstract. All right, so anyway, uh, there you go. You'll also see these words sometimes called fragment shader, and another one is called a vertex shader. And we have indeed made this chessboard or checkerboard <laughs> using a fragment shader, as you see here, and a vertex shader. So that's a, a different way of doing it. And also with a picture. And so showed you how to bring in a picture. And if you look at the source of this code, then and that may be something that we would do in the explore. If you look at the source of this code, you'll find the links to the other two versions of uh, those checkerboards. Uh, here was a nice one where we were testing to see our animation 
we're drawing a circle. Believe it or not, that's not that easy to do, to draw a circle. Uh, maybe we'll take you some, through some code right here in this bubbling and show you. Yeah, it's not exactly easy. Uh, but there's the circle, and what we're doing is we're wiggling the uniform to change the position of that circle. Isn't that neat? Okay. Uh, by the way, all these seem to be popping up in a new window, which is why I'm closing them. This is very fancy. It might take a little a touch to load this one, but whoa, huh? Yeah? By T.D. Hooper. So this won some sort of award. As you can well imagine, that's pretty magnificent. However, there's a number of magnificent shaders out there in the world. So, wow. We are 2D on the canvas. This looks like it's 3D. Um, and indeed, shaders are used. That's what, uh, that's what 3D is, basically. It's applying textures on vertexes that all come from shader or from GPU. So it's all WebGL, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what's in behind 3JS, for instance. Um, however, we don't really need to use the vertex shader all that much in on the canvas usually we're in the fragment shader the vertex shader tells you where the points how the points move of your, your triangles your polygons and then the uh the fragment shader is what tells you what colors to make the various things oh and aren't those beautiful so what colors to make the pixels inside very nice huh so I like this one because I love blobs and I've been wanting to do a blob like this for, for some time. So this is an example of dozens, if not hundreds of various blob shaders out there. You can go to Shader Toy and type in blob up in the search and you'll come across all these things. So we've just been scanning through a couple. Let's go take a look at maybe this the code for this one right here and see what the code's like. Um, you know, spirals, this is the version of that one. We've got some gradients. Gradients are a pretty good place to start. That was an op art making one. This is a gradients, and let's have a look. You see the gradient in the background? That's a shader. But what we've done is overlaid onto that a, a, zim, um, a zim list. Isn't that nice? Cool, huh? That looks very sweet. Whoosh. All right, so let's go take a look at the code. This is an underlay. Uh, so it's done a little bit differently. First of all, if we bring it into the canvas as 2D, then we're making what's called our bitmap. So we make a bitmap out of the, the uh, WebGL canvas. So canvas can be canvas 2D or canvas GL or whatever it's called. And so that's what 3JS is. It's the 3D canvas, but Zim is the 2D canvas. <clears throat> we do have stage GL, or CreateJS gave us stage GL, so we can set the frames GPU to true, and we can do uh, a WebGL canvas as well. But that means everything that you put on there has to be cached. These things are not cached, they're vector-based. So if you go to the 2D canvas, we're converting the shader into a bitmap, which is how we handle video. So that's how we bring video onto the canvas. We put it into a bitmap, and then we update that bitmap. We update the cache every frame. And so we're updating the shader and redrawing the pixels. That could be a little bit slower than the, the natural state. So we also created shader overlay. Shader overlay is a way that we can just take the shader in the, in the 3D canvas, the GPU canvas, and overlay it on Zim. But then we can't interact with it in multiple ways. So this happens to be using overlay, except we threw it to the bottom, and therefore it's called underlay. So the shader is on the GPU underneath there. And we've got Zim over top of it in a transparent, and, and Zim is what's interactive here. The shader is not. So we have these options. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. Let's go take a look at the code of this, and that's just uh, over in here. So here is our underlay.html. We're bringing in the latest Zim, Zim016 right there. 
We're also bringing in that icon because we had this on a demo page. We imported a make icon function, which makes our icon shader down here at the bottom. Here is the fragment code. So right here, that is shader code, GLSL, open, open GL. Then uh, we're making a shader from that. So this one happened to be a shader overlay. Normally there's the shader right on the stage like that. And we take the width and height of the stage and we pass in the fragment code and center it. We're putting it underneath, so it, it should be overlaid. <laughs> so if you didn't if you didn't do this next step right here, it would be overlaid. But setting the Z index, the style of the shader tag, to minus 50, we'll you know, put it back underneath things. And here we are putting a list on top of that. And we're keeping that list centered as we resize the frame. This one we're using a fill mode, which means that we make this fill the, uh, the frame there. If I get my cursor on there. So that fills the... Um, the browser window. Okay. In terms of the shader code, hmm, let's see. Well, uh, you get automatically some detail coming in, and we're using one of these. These things stand for uh, um, the uh, that's coming in. What the heck is that called again? A Uniform. So, right. Okay. I was confused because uniform starts with you. But anyway, Shader Toy has developed a system where they create a bunch of uniforms for us, such as the resolution. And that has an X and a Y on it. Uh, and that basically is giving us our the width and height. So that matches width and height. And then this is the coordinates that are coming in automatically. Uh, oh, this is our output. Our uh, frag color is the output that will automatically, that's the name of it, will output to our, our visual shader. And then we're doing something to it to change the various color coordinates across this in time. So you see what I mean? Ah, So the point of this bubbling is not to tell you what's going on in the shader code. We're going to do a, an explore that might explore aspects of that. But even then, I'm more so copying shader code as it gets more and more complicated, uh, copying that in without knowing exactly what everything is doing. We've got an inkling, I suppose. There you go. That's, that's what is making those gradients happen, beautiful gradients. Cool, huh? Let's move to the uniforms example. So the uniforms example was, find it here. Which one was the uniform example? I think it was, I think it was this one where we're wiggling a circle. Let's have a look and see if that might be it. No, I don't think so. Wiggle color A. It might just be, no, it must be another one of those. It's this one right here, uniforms. So we're changing the color of, of this box here. Well, the box is the size of the shader. We're changing the color of that box from the outside. So that was pretty straightforward to do. The shader itself is right here. We're basically saying, the color is going to be whatever color we're passing in. All right. So we're passing, it's sort of like a round trip. We're passing in a color and we're going to make the shader show that color. So this was a test of uniforms. And here we are declaring a uniform that is called color. It's got four parts. So it's a vector with four parts. <clears throat> and then up above, we've made a uniform that has a color and there's its four parts as an array. So this was the starting color and this is the alpha, red, green, blue. And we have an age uniform too that we're not even using. So that makes us our uniforms object 
and what it does is it will automatically split up our four parts into an A, B, C, and D. If we had a vector 3, a vec 3, or a vec 2, we might only have two of these, A and B, or A, B, C. So that's what uniforms does, is it breaks it into properties on the uniforms object. That allows us to wiggle any one of those properties. So there we are wiggling color A. This is the starting amount, which is 0.5. This is the minimum we want to wiggle it, so either plus or minus 0.2. And this is the maximum that we're going to wiggle it in this minimum time to that maximum time. So that's a Zim wiggle. We could also animate this uh, as well. And in wiggling those uniforms, if we pass in the uniforms to our shader, so here's the shader. This time it's not an overlay, it's right in Zim. We give it this dimension. We pass in the fragment code. And we also then pass in the uniforms that we're using on that. So that would pass in this uniforms object that gets made here. We are centering that and setting it to be draggable. So this will demonstrate that it's in Zim. Note that we're dragging it around. We could have things on top of it. We could have things below it. And that's one nice thing that you're probably not going to get everywhere. And that is this shader is just like anything else in Zim, any display object in Zim. You can scale it. You can rotate it. You can animate it. You could wiggle its X property. You could change its alpha, etc. So. It's uh, right in there. Okay, but it's got a shader on it. Nice. All right, so that's uh, sort of a quick look at us doing that. Here's the checkerboard that we looked at. And the checkerboard has uniforms too that have the colors and then the counts. So where we are, start, I don't know why it's both in start and start. Oh, eight and eight. So that's eight by eight kind of thing. We are taking the stepper and we're controlling the uniforms to the value of the stepper. So both the counts in the A and counts in B, A and B, will be whatever the current value is. That means they'll always have equal amounts. We could have made two steppers and we could have changed the number, the, the columns could have been different than the rows, for instance. So there's us setting up the stepper. Here's the shader. We're passing in the same thing that we did before with the uniforms. I can't remember what false was asking for at that point. Probably should have commented that in there, considering these are relatively educational. Making of the checkerboard itself uh, came from this blog post here and is dealing with moduluses. And there we are getting colors. It's a weird thing. The shaders uh, are a weird thing, but we'll have to talk about those later. But things aren't as you expect. It's not like we made a bunch of rectangles. It's basically you're getting every pixel location and then you have to decide what color that pixel location is going to be. And that's based on whether it should be on or off depending on the resolution and which count we're on. Uh, to give you a demonstration of, of why that can lead to complexities, here's us trying to make a circle. So this is the fragment code to make a circle. Uh, this is just setting a center, a uniform, so we can change it at the center of it from the outside. And then here's how we convert these guys to colors that we might recognize, RGB colors, two, 0 to 255, need to be converted to 0 to 1. Well, they don't need to be, but if we want to use them in the way that we are here, then, then we do. This is the function to make a circle based on stuff here. And what we're doing is clamping that. Clamping it from 0 to 1 will give a little blend on the, on the edge of it. Uh, but we're trying to decide if it's outside. If we're outside of the circle, then we're going to be one color. And if we're inside the circle, we're going to be a different color. So it goes through and figures out the x and y points and then figures out if that's within the radius. And then we either put layer one is one color. So this is layer one, it's a color, and layer two is a different color. And we're mixing those two things. And depending on whether or not we're inside that, uh, we're going to choose one or the other color. 
sort of thing. You know, hey, really, hey, in Zim, that's new circle. <laughs> Here, it's a little bit trickier to do, okay? So that's a little look ahead at, at what would be in a shader. In other words, it's going to be, if you haven't done shaders before, you need to then go off and look at lessons on how to make shader code. Zim's not responsible for what we're putting in here. Uh, you'll need to learn that from another place <laughs> at another time <laughs> and probably for some time. I expect that that will take you quite a bit to get used to any of the professional coders that I've known that have gone then into work in shaders. It's a magnificent, wonderful world, but it is a, it's a tricky world to be in. If you're, if you're really into raw code, then it's a world that you'll probably quite enjoy. I'm more into abstracted code. I prefer building things and I'm less about what the code is doing. I just want to build things and relatively quickly. And that's what Zim is about. I am Dr. Abstract. That was a look into shaders. And you can find those right here on zimjs.com and press on shaders. I should probably just show you a shader toy quickly. Why don't we do that? So if you go into any of these shaders, let's say, uh, which one haven't we looked at yet? How about this one? Oh, how about this one? Ooh. So then you press on this guy right here and it'll go right there, or actually that one will as well. So I think either of these take you through to shader toy with that in the example. Here's the code right here. And we'll have to talk about in the Explorer, the Zim Explorer and shaders, what you need to do. In general, you probably just copy that and put it in and then pass that into Zim Shader and it will work. But there are a few things around. Uh, one thing is you can have multiple channels in Shader Toys. So some of these might have channels, at which point you'd have to do some, some fixing and stuff. Because right now we're only accepting one channel at the time. All right, uh, so Shader Toy is out here. Here's some cool shaders, like have a look at that, wow. And you're welcome to uh, dig in there and support them if you can with PayPal. Uh, also mind your performance. This one seems to be bogging out a little bit. Maybe I got too many shaders already open in, in the browser, but you can do a search here. Here are some that I've searched for, Spiral, Gradient, Blob, Opart, Okay, so you can do a search in there and then come up with, with different shaders. Fantastic. Looking forward to seeing what you bring into Zim in terms of shaders. Remember, it's not just, here's the shader. You can now start using that shader as backdrops in games or on icons like we had there or in behind uh, your various stuff. I am Dr. Abstract here at zimjs.com. Please come and join us at Discord or Slack you want any help you can press either of those we also have a new forum coming up it will replace slack but you can still come in there for now we'll see you soon this has been a what's bubbling at zim i am dr abstract uh, have a great day or night cheers